Welcome to back to the YouTube video everyone. Holly Outridge has officially lost her mind. Honestly, the commitment You all right? Yeah, You're in your camo, practically. After that slightly entertaining start to the YouTube video. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, so today we are gonna be doing something a bit more educational maybe, I suppose you could say. So as you guys know, or you maybe don't know, but I am now a brand ambassador for the very wonderful Westgate Laboratories. So Westgate are a worm counting service, a worm egg counting service. So they offer a chemical free way of looking at our parasite control. This is a very important thing in the UK. We are at the point of needing to make some very serious changes due to the fact that, in fact, in the UK, we are running out of chemicals. So chemicals are becoming less and less effective and we are starting to see resistance to the wormers that we're using. So your standard wormers that we have are starting to become less effective and so what we're having to do is look at different ways that we can care for our horse in this way making sure that they are staying worm free but without using so many chemicals did you know that out of 10 horses only 11 11 no out of 10 horses only eight of them would actually no even worse out of 10 horses only two of them would actually need worming so if you were to suck worm egg count sample 10 horses, only Two. those would actually need a wormer. That is quite terrifying statistics when you think of the number of wormers that are being sold in the country. For every one worm egg count sample that is made, 11 wormers are purchased. Those are the actual statistics. So yeah, it's frightening stuff. And we really, really need to be doing better because we are going to have a serious epidemic of worms on our hands and that is going to mean livery yards that cannot run because every horse that lands on the land will gain a huge worm burden and those livery yards would have to close. Studs would have to close because they are not able to sustain their horses on the land that they have because the worms are becoming resistant to the wormers. So I am today having a photo shoot with Holly. As you saw, Holly was here for Westgate Labs. So we're gonna be taking some pictures we're going to be having some conversations and I'm going to take you guys with me. Just covering the camera's microphone because it's windy. Anyway, yeah, I think they've just arrived actually. So let's go and welcome Claire and Christy. Here we have a car full of exciting goodies. <laughs> and some olive oil for good measure. Oh, well, we'll tell you about it. understanding so this process you're going to talk me really through essentially what like how this would work yes and that's what i just want you to yeah like to sort of have like that normal conversation okay. so it's, it, obviously it's staged but it's not too staged yeah. just have that conversation it would actually be helpful yeah because sometimes i don't know what i'm doing yes so. yeah <laughs> there we go so uh and i'm gonna yeah i'll just take your glasses off so i know so, so i'm like oh no sorry just uh look yeah look down just look at like uh, whatever you're doing like, whatever Westgate offer a free consultation service. If you're anything like me and the thought of, you know, understanding your full worming program and your worm egg counting program is quite a lot. So Christy and I are running through what we have done. So we worm counted at the end of April and now we are discussing when we're going to be worm egg counting next and then maybe what worming protocol we may need to follow if we have any horses coming back with a high worm egg count. It's really important that we understand the importance of this because we can really easily get it wrong and we can end up with a burden and this is why Westgate offer this service. So you can head over to their website now and book your consultation. And, yeah. I've got not full manky faces because we're looking at yeah, the rotten bits of work. Yeah. I shouldn't be have this job really. I'm not I'm not good at being like Yeah Mary Trump. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Do you have any snacks? I need a I need a Hi. Come on. Come on, Dolly. 
Another amazing service that Westgate offer is sand testing. So as you can see, the paddocks are a little bit dry and a bit bare. And we are photographing the possibility that Belle is picking up more sand in her diet than maybe she should. And Westgate offer a service where if you are on sandy soil, you can test their droppings and find out whether they have sand being stored in their body. Excellent. Polly's like, can you just put the horse here? I'm like, sure, just pick her up, put her over there. Mine will do it. Yeah, perfect, well done. How glamorous, taking pictures of actual horse droppings, honestly. Claire just said, if you are a good enough photographer that you can make droppings look glamorous, then you should win a prize, and I agree. Right, what's next? Uh, walking. 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 And walking with product, I think. Walking with product. Got it. Imagine like you're walking to the field that you're going to go and talk about. And, uh, <laughs> Because it is things like that that you notice. Yeah. It's remarkable having had lots of photo shoots. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Off you go. You can talk. So we. So maybe do like three strides really and then walk together. That's it. So, yeah. My hand. Sorry. Sorry. You go back to where you finished, yeah? And then we'll like use you walking backwards as the. That's it. Perfect. And then kind of. Back. Like, forward. Forward. Back. Yeah, I oh, know. I'm sorry. Very, very important. Um, just again, think strange as you converse, just like fractionally, just turn your shoulders slightly in as you walk. If you can, that's all over. Okay, you ready? Go. It's like, we can do Interestingly, would we both talk at the same time? No, we wouldn't. Okay, and back. You go that way, same again. Switch hands, and off you go. Closer, that's it. Right, here we go. We're gonna do some the baby food pouch of our life actually. We're gonna do some so fake check something with this woman a horse. Do we want steps? Do we want me to photograph this or is that not relevant? I don't know. No. This isn't this is us pretending this that we're worming. Oh yeah, yeah. of course we are. Perfect look. Nice. Right. Oh, oh, this is gonna come out. I did nearly say <laughs> don't overfill it. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Here we are, Claire, taking over the modelling duties. She said maybe too much with these on. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, it, wasn't it? All your guys are going to be 600, aren't they? Yeah. Cool. Do you want to say my horse is a fat, Claire? No. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I got showered in off of <laughs> So we have our, yeah, well when I record on here the light's not good, it's like dark, it's getting lighter, and then it's light. Here we have B. this is our uh, p fake worming candidate, so um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Mary's concentrating, please. Delicious. I've had an upgrade. <laughs> Westgate, hack it equine. Ta -da! Mm -hmm. Check it out. Does it go with the blue? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're on brand, don't worry. <laughs> she's got a little mole under her chin, and she's got one curly hair that points completely in the wrong direction. <laughs> So then we moved on to the single horse worm egg count testing kits. These are actually fully recyclable, which I think is amazing. So we needed a shot where Zora was sort of reaching down towards the droppings and I was picking them up. Um, Holly was telling me where to put Zora. Oh, just like that. Yeah, just like that. 
these test kits are perfect if you are on a livery yard or you are just a private keeper of a horse. Uh, you can use these tests for one horse, you can buy multiples and do it for multiple horses. As you saw, they also offer like yard discount for testing multiple samples but this is a great way of getting started with worm egg counting with your one little perfect horse as you can see Zora was doing a wonderful job of being very biddable putting her nose in the shot and so here's the result of this moment on the shoot So next up is pinworm testing, a rather unglamorous moment for me, having to uh, place a piece of sticky tape around Zora's back end. Pinworm don't necessarily cause a natural problem for horses, but what they do do is create irritation, which can lead to infection and that kind of thing. So if your horse is really scratching their tail, this can be something good to check to make sure that it is not the cause. Uh, some of the wormers that we use have also started to create resistance in pinworm, so always best to check. You can find out more information on the Westgate website. So yeah, you're gonna have a sticky s strip of plastic and it's the sticky bit that you're then gonna press against, like in and around the edge of the literally horse. On. Yeah, across it. Yeah, <laughs> literally. And then once you've got an impression, fold it in half, like sticky side to sticky side. So on this shoot, the guys from Westgate wanted some like images for their website, maybe images just with me and my horses, so we decided to take Blondie down to the arena for some hedge picking. As you can see, Blondie decided enough was enough. Did you just start whatever she wants? I just, in her life, her world, I just live in <laughs> so we went back to old faithful zora and we managed to get some lovely lovely pictures i'll share them now So next up, we had to take some pictures with me having a phone consultation. But as you can see, I had to stand on something to be able to see over the door because I'm quite short. And then we realised this. Excuse me, sir. I'd like to order one more with its ears full, Imagine if I, I look like I'm as tall as she is. No, you're good. You're not on the same, uh, same plane, so I need her. So once again, we resorted to using Zora as a model. Started well. Wasn't bad to start with. Little, little bit of the tongue out, but we can, we can tolerate that. Started to progress. Zora had her own ideas about becoming the star of the show. Literally nearly ate my whole face off the side of my head and then redeemed herself, thankfully. I've managed to snaffle Claire for a moment and we are going to talk about worms because I feel like this is a really something that we should all be learning a bit more about. And that's why we're doing all of this. This is for education, so here we go. Right. So Claire and I actually Claire and I actually did a podcast. You have to look at the lens. Okay, so yeah. If you're talking to the camera. Um, so Claire and I did a podcast recently for my online training platform and we talked about all things. I will put the link up here so that you guys can have a listen to it. But I want to just sit Claire down for a moment and ask, ask a few questions because I think 
you know, we've been doing all of this today and it would be nice to tell people why this is so important. I touched on it briefly at the beginning, explaining about how we only have so many chemicals that we can use and we are starting to get to a place in the UK where we're building some resistance. And what that means is that those chemicals are just going to stop working. And so we need to be finding a way, which we have through the worm egg counting, to stop having to use so many chemicals, right? Because it, there, it is putting actually our equestrian livelihood at risk because yards may not be able to function, uh, studs may not be able to function, and then you end up not being able to have horses. Yeah, it's as serious as that. Mm. You know, if you've got horses on a premises and there's untreatable parasite burdens, the horses get disease and you can't treat the disease mm. from the parasite. So that's where we're going to end up at eventually if we don't change what we're doing, really reduce our chemical use, be testing first and only treating the ones that need it. And that's going to buy us significant time because that's what we need right now. Yeah. And, and we were talking about the numbers, and I muddled, muddled, muddled my numbers up like I'm muddling my words now at the beginning of this video. But it is that we, if you worm counted 10 horses, only two of them would actually need worming. So that is a potential reduction of eight lots of chemicals going into the soil. And I also learned something recently, was it maybe you that told me about it? The amount of chemical that actually sticks in the horse is very, very small, and the amount yeah. that's passed through is enormous. The amount going in the soil Exactly, is... yeah, so like if you give an ivermectin wormer, which is a really common wormer that we give in this country to our horses, the research shows that you give the wormer in the front end, and between 80 and 95% of that will pass all the way through the horse out into the dung, unmetabolized, unmet so it's going to come out in its raw form. So just as its intention in the gut is to kill the parasites that are there, once it gets into the soil, it, the dung beetles, which are the first port of call, but also it will leach into the soil worms, invertebrates, gets taken up in the grass. So it's going to have a massive impact. You know, even the grass is going to be, the germination is reduced and the growth by around 30%. Wow. So, you know, it has this impact and that's going to trickle right on through the food chain. You know, it's a really toxic chemical. And it's really resilient in the environment as well. So they've tested samples like 45 days after they've been like laid in the field and the ivermectin content is still as high wow. because of its resilience. Other chemicals like moxidexin does start to break down, but for the ivermectin, you've got to get it off the pasture and compost it. So thermophilic composting, which is like above 60 degrees, that's the only way that that will then start to break that down and make that dung and the ivermectin then safe right. again in the environment so yeah really key things mm. and you mentioned something a moment ago about um how actually we don't want horses to have a zero egg worm count there is a need for there to be a, a, a low level of parasite actually yeah and i think that's a really interesting point because we all think ew worms like we need to get them to zero we're looking to eradicate them and actually the thinking now is that a small burden of parasites could be a good thing for a horse you know they've evolved over millennia to live side by side the worms themselves release this in anti-inflammatory kind of um stuff into the gut which is actually good for the horse it stimulates the immune system and so there is this kind of symbiosis that you get from that mm. when we struggle is if the parasite burden gets out of control and that's when you get disease and the way that we keep our horses now in modern living single species back and back over the same pasture that's when you really play into the hands of the parasites and then you can get that out of control and then just going back into like the parallels from human medicine. You know, we're seeing so many more autoimmune incidences in humans mm. because we now live such sterilized lives, mm. like we're you know free of bacteria and virus and parasites with modern living, and the immune system has nothing else to do, and so it overreacts and that's fights itself. Yeah. Right. So actually, a low level can be a good thing in the horses. So some are naturally more resilient than others. They're the ones that won't necessarily need the treatment every time or just now and again with the support. But yeah, um, they're just effects of life. You know, they are, they're around in the environment, all around us. And by worm egg counting, we can learn about those numbers mm. and 
manage them, learning, okay, that horse is going too high, that one needs a wormer, this one is in a safe range, they are managing their own parasites almost, yeah. we are managing their parasite well yeah. with our management in our field, with our poo picking, by rotating the grazing, resting the grazing, all of these things. So there's so many ways now that we can control that parasite burden without just blanket worming our horses. Yeah, it's evidence-based medicine, essentially. So you're using the information, you're not just going in blindly with a chemical, you can monitor, is there resistance, what percentage is it, you can target your treatment better. It's just like the modern way to do your worm control program, really. Why would you not like mm. test first? Because it gives you so much more information. Absolutely. And I think, you know, the thing is, is, is a worm egg count is a similar value to some wormers on the market, some of the single, uh, yeah. single chemical wormers. And so, you know, there's a lot of argument, isn't there, where, the, oh, it's cost, it costs the same. But the cost to the long-term health of that animal, the environment, is going to be less if you can oh. worm egg count. Whereas if you are just blanket worming, you are putting that horse at risk. You are adding chemical and adding... Um... We've got as much time as it takes for that horse to come and knock this camera off the fence. Okay. I can't remember what I was talking about, but it, it is reducing this risk, isn't it? Reducing the risk for the horse, the environment, the entire yard, and the future of horses. Not just our horses now, but those that are going to come after us. Yeah, that's it. And you can look at places like Australia, South Africa, even parts of Wales, where they've kept a lot of sheep and used a lot of worm medication. And there are now areas where they couldn't keep sheep, they can't keep sheep safe because there aren't any more medication. In mm. agriculture, they're developing new medicine. Wow. And so they do now have a new sheep wormer, and that's opened that out a little bit. In horses, there's no new development because there's just not the money in it. Mm. And our moxidectin and our ivermectin came from agriculture, so we, that was a win. But the latest sheep wormers are actually toxic to horses, so that oh, you know, doesn't work for us. So really, it's a case of like we just have to buy ourselves time, mm. you know. And there are things kind of that um, scientists are developing, like tannins potentially, or fungi that sort of thing yeah which will go into the gut and um, create environments that are less palatable for worms but there's the whole kind of how do you get the dosage the palatability the packaging and all of those things right yeah. and then license them mm. for use so there's just there's a lot of things kind of in churn and there's hope that there with the new canter the pan industry group that's been identified yeah there'll be research there that they can hopefully help to identify yeah how to help these things and solve this issue for yeah. us so it is just a case of like right now get your testing and hopefully yeah. we can delay this happening and because this is something that you guys can do something about this isn't just us talking about it and you don't have to be the yard manager you don't have to run a yard you don't have to have loads of horses to be able to do something about this what you can do is you can choose to test your horse whether the whole yard is doing that it's not necessarily relevant but it is important that the majority of people start opting in for worm egg counting rather than just blanket worming and if you are on a yard and you need to discuss it with your yard owner your yard manager then reach out to Westgate and they'd be more than happy to discuss it we talked today about consultation and they offer a free consultation service so if you are unsure or your yard owner or manager is unsure of what to do how to approach the situation Westgate are here to help. They want to make a change in the industry. They want to help the greater good in the horse world. And that is what we can do. So I do hope that you found today's video interesting. Thank you guys so much for coming. It's been a lovely day in the sunshine, talking about horses and worm and poop and horse such poo, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed this week's video and I will see you guys for next time. Thank you for watching. Mm. Bye for now. Cheers, bye. I am so grateful to have Westgate Labs supporting my yard. It can be a minefield looking after this many horses, so any support that I can get to make my life easier and the horses' lives healthier is good by me. Please do head over to the Westgate Labs website for more information and to start your worm egg counting journey. Massive thank you also to Holly Outridge Photography for her amazing imagery bundle of laughs and general amazing organization that we had on this day if you are looking for an equine photographer for your brand or for your personal imagery please do reach out to holly thanks westgate see you guys next time <laughs>